Hey, so in this video, we get to see and hear from someone who just passed the AFI exam. So this is what success looks like. So here's my interview with Jason. Hey, Jason. So thanks for joining us today and coming in to um, tell us about the AFI. Congratulations on passing. Super excited for you and all that holds for your future and your professional career. I mean, honestly, it's a huge step. And there are a lot of people out there that are looking at taking the test and uh, just what advice would you give them? I mean, recent, recent person who just literally just passed, just found out. Um, I would definitely recommend studying. Uh, I studied about two to three weeks before the actual exam, a little, maybe a little longer, closer to a month. Uh, I wouldn't underestimate it. A lot of questions are there to trick you up. The NCES likes to uh, put answers there that you'll probably get, but if you don't use the right equation, uh, they'll be wrong. Uh, definitely, definitely take the practice, practice exam, the NCES, uh, post, buy it, take it, uh, figure out what subjects you really need to, uh, learn before you actually take the exam and definitely work on a uh, time management. It's 110 questions or whatever, and you have six hours or five hours and 20 minutes. So you have about like three or four minutes, uh, question. You don't want to really be stuck on, uh, one question for 15 minutes because that can really limit the time at the end of the exam that you have to finish. Yeah. And you're a fast test taker. I mean, you would always be like first done with a test and like, um, that's probably to your advantage on, on a test like this where you, you know it or you don't, you got to figure it out in terms of like flagging questions to come back to, was that process pretty easy? Was there any issues with that? Yeah, no, there was no issues with that. There was a flag button right at the top of the actual question. And you would just click that button and you could even click an answer. So you click an answer and you're not sure about it. And you want to come back later. You click that answer and the flag and then you hit next. And then at the end of the section, since it's broken down into two sections, uh, it shows you all the questions from which you didn't answer and which you flagged that you can just go back and check if you have time. Okay. So that's, that sounds like a pretty slick system in, in terms of just making it real obvious. I, I mean, cause I know that's, you know, you, you haven't used this system before. So coming into a new system, um, trying to figure out how to use it and making sure you use it on test day and you're comfortable with it is probably a big thing. Um, were there any other like tricks or, you know, intricacies with using the reference handbook or, or just marking the answers or anything like that, that you, you could offer? There was no tricks with the reference handbook, but there was nothing that was uh, screaming at me to use certain parts of it. So you do have to generally understand it well yeah. and know where the equations that you need for the question asked are. For sure, because there's nothing within any of the questions from which you can just search a keyword like control F and just search through the handbook based off one word on the question and find the equation that you need to answer it. Yeah, so it's you have to actually know the content. You can't just um, glean from the question itself to, to find it. Um, now, in terms of I, I mean, there's obviously the, the equation type questions. Um, did you have any alternate questions? And also maybe another follow-up question to that is how about like the conceptual questions? I know there's some alternates where there's not just a multiple choice. And then, um, in terms of the conceptual ones, there were probably some of those too, right? Yeah. From reading online, I didn't really focus on a lot of conceptual questions because they generally said there would be like 10 to 15. I, however, encountered like 30 conceptual questions that covered almost wow. all subjects, at least one or two per subject. Uh, and they were generally like, uh, more based on the knowledge of the uh, subject you have, as opposed to like, it wasn't something you could generally guess on. Like they would ask you how certain tests for certain things were used and like what they tested for. And it wasn't anything you could find in the reference handbook. It just had to be basic knowledge of the actual subject at hand that could answer that. Yeah. So you knew it or you didn't. And that's just, that's more so experience. Did you actually pay attention during class or did you fall asleep? But you were always a front row guy, too, so you... Uh, <laughs> you yeah, but I definitely got tripped up. I also noticed on a lot of questions, um, there was generally a lot of questions where the answer would be like 35.6, and then you found two answers, like A and B would be 35, and the next one would be 36. So you had to look yeah. back at where you rounded type of thing to find out the correct answer. So you have to be very careful on those kind of mathematical questions as well. Yeah, for sure. Now, did you have any of the alternate question types in terms of what is the answer, fill in the blanks, or any of those things? Uh, I had one fill in the blank, and it was a area moment of inertia of like a, a regular shape, and that okay. was about it. 
There was no other, like, uh, fill in the blanks or, like, which one lies in this thing, if that makes any sense. There was no yeah. questions like that. It was mostly all multiple choice except that one. Um, now, did you have any, que- uh, like, issues with uh, the I, – I, I know they don't give you paper, but they give you, like, the writing sheets. Any any issues with that? How would that work for you? Um, It worked well. They gave you a, like, uh, like these pads – that had multiple pages in them that for expo markers that they could easily clean off. Um, yeah, they worked out pretty well. The, uh, the expo marker stayed on well until you like you licked your finger or whatever. But other than that, yeah, they were perfect for what you really needed to do. Cool. Um, and now in terms of content areas, were there, do you, do you feel like it was pretty representative of the numbers of questions that they give you? And because the NCS has that spec of like how many questions per topic. And do you feel like that was fairly representative or was there one topic that you would say you really have to know, you know, topic A or B or whatever? There was actually like two or three topics from which the, when I took my practice, practice exam, I figured out that I needed to study more. And luckily they weren't really, uh, fairly represented, like uh, NCES would say on their exams. Uh, one of them was definitely transportational and definitely construction. I didn't see almost, I saw maybe five transportational questions and like two of those were conceptual. And then I saw maybe like five construction questions too. I saw a lot of static questions. I saw a lot of mathematic questions and I saw a lot of uh, hydrology and hydraulics and wastewater questions stuff like that okay yeah i mean statics has its hands in all sorts of things it has its hands in fluid mechanics and um, structures and uh i'm trying to think but it it, structural design obviously but yeah statics is one of those core core concepts that like once you get it it really is probably going to help you with a lot of the other other pieces now coming out of the exam did you feel confident no, actually, I came out of that exam, and I got in my car, and on the drive home, I was thinking to myself, yeah, there's there's definitely a chance I passed. I mean, no, wow, there's definitely a chance I failed, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? But, like, I thought it was, like, I thought it was a 50-50 shot, and it was really weird to come out of a test thinking that way. But, yeah, I definitely think uh, there was there was a chance I failed, and there was a chance I passed. There was a few questions that I definitely, more than a few, that I definitely had to uh, guess on or make an educated guess. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of the preparation, you said coming out of it, you felt like 50-50, like you could pass, maybe not. Um, it, it, I mean, obviously, you're you're in your senior year of, of a college program here. And, um, you know, how, how much did you actually study? Like, what do you like? Would you say, like, did you spend most of, you know, the past couple of weeks just hitting the books really hard or, or you know, in addition to obviously what you've done over the past four years but what was your like what, how much did you put into it so to speak uh i originally thought that i was going to study for like three months but i found myself only studying for about one and it was like it was a generally hard study like i made my own like little guide of what i was going to hit every day based off of how i did on the practice practice exam and it was more or less like four or five hours a day for a month and then the the three days leading up to it, it was a solid like eight hours, definitely. Wow. I, I was I was almost like uh, studying out of stress to take it type of thing, just to make myself feel better. Yeah, no, so definitely definitely a lot of hard work there, um, and obviously it paid off for you too. So, um, just I mean, how'd you feel when you logged in? Because the first thing you get is from NCES, right? I mean, how'd you feel? Um, you know? yeah, I woke up this morning with a nice email and. Uh, my heart went from like zero to a thousand once I read the email because they don't tell you the test score on the email. You have to go in and log in. Okay. So I had to like uh, get my own willpower to get out of bed and actually log on my computer to view the results. And I'm definitely happy that it said passed for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I can still remember. Op- I got an envelope. I mean, that's that's when I took it. I got an envelope in the mail, you know, and I was super excited just to to know that I passed and know that that was one more milestone in, uh, in my, my career. And, um, yeah, so I'm super happy for you, super happy for, uh, uh, you know, the work that you put in that you pay, that it paid off for you. And, um, I know literally it will pay off for you as well in your future, like getting that first, uh, licensure credential is huge. 
on your way um, to becoming a PE and uh, in your engineering career. I mean, it just opens up a ton of doors for you. And uh, again, just congratulate you on that. Um, super excited for you. Thanks for taking the time today to uh, offer any tips. And, uh, you know, I mean, as it goes, uh, um, there will be more videos here that people can hopefully use to practice. But, um, but thanks, Jason. Appreciate the time you took today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. And uh, thanks so much. Yeah, no problem, Mark. Thank you. So I hope the tips and tricks shared in that interview help you on your way to successfully passing the FE. All right, so as Jason said, hey, keep working hard, put the work into it, and you too uh, can be successful. So hopefully this channel helps you with that. Feel free to subscribe uh, for more videos like this on, on helpful hints, hints, tips, and tricks, and also videos to help you on your way. Until next time, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.